and welcome to an introduction of your new quantum timing system software. To start up the software, simply click on the desktop icon that says Quantum Swimming, and the software will automatically start up. Quick little tour, configuration tab here is a place where you can set some different configuration parameters that are system-wide. Most of the time these get set once and you do not have to change them. Uh, up here, your box indicator at the top that's pulsing green tells you that the software is in communication with your timer box. That's the red box that sits on your desk. The time here can be synced to the time of day, or as you can see here, it is just simply telling us how long that the timer and the software have been connected. Our next button here is race. Race is how you actually time a meet or a session, and quit is how you exit the software. So if we click race, it's going to start up, and you're going to see a list of all the races that you have done before. And it's also going to show you the, uh, give you the ability to create a new one. So if we click here and uh, do uh, training as the session we are creating now, we'll click OK. We're going to start up, and it's going to come to the settings tab first. And then under settings, you have three tabs, timing, printer, and tables. Our first box here is our, some of our times settings in seconds, arming delay uh, after a split time, arming delay after the start of the race, the reaction window, uh, how long are we going to uh, show reaction times off the blocks at the start, and how long are we going to show relay reaction times or exchange times. The next section uh, down the next box down here is net hold time. That's how long we're going to hold our uh, uh, running time or our split times. And 10 seconds here is set for our no touch warning. Down in miscellaneous, we always want to make sure that these boxes are checked for sound at touch, sound at start. We always want to make sure warn of unofficial races. And if you're a beginner in timing, you always want to make sure auto unused lanes is not checked. Also, as you know, Quantum can uh, maintain records for you, so you can auto-update records table on official, and you can uh, make sure that in case you miss a split at a turn wall or something like that, uh, you're not worried about it uh, when there's a no touch. And then down here uh, in the Quantum software, you see a lot of colors, and this is where if you're colorblind or there's better colors for you, you can change the colors uh, uh, down here. Uh, in this section. Next is our printer tab. So in here, we always want to keep uh, XPS files enabled. Uh, for those uh, XPS files is Microsoft's version of a PDF. So we definitely want to do that. If we want to print results at the end of every race, uh, we want to we can do that to our PC printer, whether that's a network printer or one connected via USB. Um, so we can set that. We can also say print to our default printer. And then we can also set it to print uh, auto print on official. You can make it to where you can preview a print if you wanted to, and we always want to include button times. If you want to make your fan or your prints look a little fancier, you can also add a header logo and a footer logo. If your Quantum was purchased with a serial printer, you enable it here, auto print, and then you can have a summary print in, in lane order at the end. And our next tab under settings is tables. This is the default uh, information that is delivered with your quantum every time you start up. This information will get overwritten by High Tech Neat Manager or Splash, whichever you are using, um, and basically allows you to run independently. So here are the distances that come standard, and then styles, categories, rounds, statuses, and records. You will only see records here if you have imported data into your quantum database. Our next tab is IOs, which stands for inputs and outputs. In your system, we can have uh, set up to three scoreboards uh, if we want to, using Swiss Timing Alpha, using UNT protocol, scoreboard ERTB. We also can set our data handling outputs. Here I have selected high tech. If I click on high tech, 
you can see that I've selected a folder on my hard drive where I want to use as my shared folder for all our data coming from high tech and going to high tech and then also you can do splash as you can see from your drop down menu here you can select from a lot of different protocols sport in the box finish light high tech splash splash normal OSM6 LST files ERT Swiss timing alpha or Calypso our next tab is pool configuration so this is where you set up your pool as you want to do timing. HA stands for harness, so on the back of your quantum you'll notice that there's an HA1 slot and an HA2 slot. So at this point you really want to look and start seeing the boxes that we see on the screen representing your pool. So if your timing table is going to be set up at this location on your pool, you are going to want to, to sit here and look at this rectangle as the pool. So you want to see that lane 8 is closest to you. If it's not, we hit the reverse here and make it to where lane 1 is closest to you. And we also want to make sure that our module numbers here are matching with our lane numbers. So if we have module 1 in lane number 1, it should match. And it should be the lane closest to you if your timing table is down here. So. In this configuration, if we're going to be doing long course and our timing table is going to be in this location, we're going to put harness 1 here. We're going to put harness 1 here on the right hand side. We're going to say everything finishes at right. We're going to enable harness 2 here on our left hand side. And on harness 1, we are going to be looking for a touchpad, a platform, and two buttons. On our turn wall, we are only going to be looking for a touchpad and a starting platform. If this is how you run your meets mostly, you can now click Save as Default. Our next tab is our Pool Test tab. This is where you can test all your inputs for your timing system. So as you can see on our Pool Configuration tab, we were looking for a touchpad, a platform, and two buttons. And on our turn end, we were only looking for a platform and button. At this point, if we go press one of the buttons, pull on our starting block or touchpad, you will start seeing the numbers here count up as it's receiving touches. If it's not counting up when you press it, then that indicates that you have a problem with one of the input devices. And our final tab is our timing tab. And here is where all of our timing work is going to be done. You have here your list of events. If you click on one of the events, now you have your list of uh, heats. And if you click on one of the heats, you have your swimmers that are in each heat. As you saw on our IOs page, we enabled a scoreboard. We enabled two scoreboards, excuse me, and high tech. So that's there. So that is a quick tour of your quantum timing system. Please continue to the next lesson to learn more about each one of the tabs.